for next year's conferences, and also the presenter gets the information typed up and sent to him or her. And so it's important for the presenter as well. And we do want to make sure that our phones are turned off or turned on to vibrate. Uh, and uh, actually, we are letting people in if they come in late. We're not supposed to, but uh, several people come in late, just as the nature of the framework. Um, I belong to uh, Toastmasters uh, on Purpose, which works out of Harper College in Palatine. It is a advanced club. And I'd like to introduce to you presenter Mark Steele, whose title of his presentation today is Become a More Confident Presenter Today. Mark is a speaker, private coach, and founder of PresentYourSuccess.com. At PresentYourSuccess.com, Mark helps professionals amplify their success through teaching confident public speaking, impactful presentations, and internet video skills. Mark has been a public speaker for over 20 years and has, excuse me, delivered more than 2,000 presentations, which includes presenting to many of the world's leading organizations. I think that you will experience that. In fact, he is very passionate about helping speakers enjoy the process of connecting with their audience and effectively sharing their message. Having just joined Toastmasters two months ago in Woodbridge, Mark is excited and honored to have been selected as an educational speaker at this year's fall conference. As a married father of two, Mark's other passions include spending time with his family, traveling, hiking, and rock climbing. Please welcome Mark as he helps us to become a more confident presenter today. Mark. Good morning. Thank you very much for coming. We're going to spend time today talking all about confidence. And to start off, I want you to think about something in your life right now that you're confident in. It could be your speaking ability. It could be something you do for work, something you do for fun, a hobby of yours. Like, I happen to love adult coloring books. And something like that. So think about something in your life, maybe something you've done with your kids, something like that. Raise your hand if you have something in your life that you are confident in. Everybody should raise their hand. Something, please. Have a, I need all the feedback I can get up here. So, and then how many of you consider yourself confident presenters? I am a extremely or very confident presenter. Raise your hand if you feel there. Okay, great. So with uh, with. Three folks in the room, <laughs> already confident presenters. I Number one, thank you for, for coming. I should be able to share some techniques that will help you become even more confident as well. I happen to think that, uh, that confidence is a muscle and that you, as long as you continue to nurture it, it can continue to grow and your audiences will benefit. What we're gonna do is over the next 43 minutes, I'm gonna share five practical tips that you can use to become a more confident presenter. These techniques will be easy for you to take advantage of, easy for you to start with today. You can immediately start to, uh, to utilize them and your audiences will notice the difference as you start to get more and more comfortable with your presentations. And in fact, actually, because uh, I'm giving everything away, one low price <laughs> this morning, you can actually utilize these in other parts of your life, your career as well. So of course, we all know, as confident presenters, you know that these same skills can be applied to job interviews, large meetings that you have to run, uh, events that you MC, those, those types of things, or other community events if you do volunteer things as well. So you get that even though we're focusing on presentations, you get benefit across other aspects of your career and your life as well. The, uh, let's start off by talking about what confidence really is. Well, if you ask Merriam-Webster Dictionary, I'm not sure how you would ask Merriam-Webster Dictionary, but if you did, you'd see that they define confidence as the feeling or consciousness of one's powers. 
the feeling or consciousness of one's powers. I actually love that definition because if you think about it for a minute, the consciousness of one's powers, in other words, it's the awareness of strengths you possess. And it doesn't leave open for interpretation as to whether or not you possess particular strengths. Instead, it encourages you to become aware of the strengths that you possess. And that tells me that if you become aware of your ability to continue to become a stronger, more competent presenter, then you will become more competent. Some people think, why? Why does confidence matter? Of course, I'm sure that you know you've had the experience of sitting in a room with a presenter that is less confident. You can typically tell right away because they may be looking down away from the audience, not making eye contact. They could be wandering back and forth. They are shifting uneasily up on the stage. Their movements aren't really controlled or, or have intention. Another key sign is they could be talking too quietly for you to be able to hear what they're saying. Or they could be talking so fast because they're nervous they just want to get the presentation over with. Or equally bad is they're just talking in a monotone voice and it's really hard for you to <laughs> tell the difference between any of their key points. So it's, in those situations, the audience has a hard time understanding exactly what the key points may be or they start to feel uncomfortable if I feel uncomfortable. Now contrast that with a presenter that is more confident. That person is typically looking the audience in the eye, they're making eye contact, establishing a connection, trying to build rapport with the audience. Their movements are controlled. They have purpose either to address different parts of the room or to kind of break up key points or key messages that they are having. They're easily heard. They are articulate, they use different vocal varieties, so it helps the audience understand the difference between something that's important and something less important. The audience themselves are typically more engaged with that speaker. They're actually wanting to you know, interact with the speaker. If the speaker were to ask questions, if they, or they react, if the speaker says something inspirational or says something funny, something you won't have to worry about during this presentation at all. So the audience is more engaged with that person. So where a, a lack of competence made the first presenter difficult to understand, being confident makes the second presenter engaging, informative, ideally a little fun, that is the importance of confidence in a presenter. Can you really learn confidence? Of course. Confidence is a skill. It can be learned, just like typing or texting, whichever one you're best at nowadays, <laughs> cooking or ballroom dancing, mountain climbing, adult coloring books, whatever the skill is, you name it, confidence is also a skill that you can practice and teach yourself to be more confident. And even better news, each one of you raised your hand when I asked if there was anything in your life that you were confident about. And so you already know what confidence feels like. And that puts you at a, a great advantage of being able to take those parts of your life where you feel most confident in and actually utilize those in your presentations to help your presentations be even more confident. So that's sort of the context of why confidence is important. I talked about, I was going to share five key, five key tips of being more confident, so let's do that. Tip number one, this one I put a lot of thought into, this really, I, this is actually why they selected me to be a presenter is because of thought like this. Tip number one, talk about things you're really good at. <laughs> I know, 
let it sink in. I know, that's a good one. <laughs> really, of course, the benefits are obvious. If you're talking about something that you're passionate about, that you're connected to, then you're going to be able to, you feel the confidence of, you'll be able to answer any questions that may come up. You'll have more examples or experience to share, so creating the content will be easier. If you're passionate about a topic, then that enthusiasm comes through. You actually get a bit of presentation swagger because you know that what you're talking about is something that you enjoy quite a bit. So make sure that you take advantage of that. And oftentimes people, it seems obvious, but I actually find that people overlook it because they say, well, my interests or you know, the things that I love doing are A, B, and C, but my job is X. And so they're completely unrelated, and we're going to talk about how to address that coming up. Another thing I hear quite often is, well, sure, I'm interested in these things over here, but I don't have a unique perspective, or people don't want to hear my stories or something. I can tell you resoundingly, you're wrong <laughs> if you think that. <laughs> With all due respect, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> of course, you have a unique perspective. Nobody has had the experience with that subject that you have had. So don't shy away from thinking that you don't have something unique to share because of course you do. You do have a very unique viewpoint and the world wants to hear it. So make sure that you're sharing it. Let's talk about suggestions on how you can do that. Should be obvious to the folks in this room, what's a, a key way that you can present on things that you love? What's a, a one option for you to do those presentations that you love? Toastmasters. That's exactly right. Thank you very much for the participation. Yes, Toastmasters. We should all be giving presentations on things that we enjoy. It, again, it, it, the more we're enjoying it, the more they're going to, other Toastmasters are going to enjoy it, they'll learn more about you and maybe learn about the subject of which you're presenting. As well as it gives you that confidence, that experience of presenting. I don't suggest actually that you only present on things that you enjoy at Toastmasters because I think Toastmasters is an excellent opportunity for you to push outside your comfort zones as well, but use those things that you enjoy even when talking outside your comfort zone, and I'll talk about how to do that coming up. Another suggestion, how many of you have heard of meetup.com? Have you heard of the, yep. sure. okay. So for those of you uh, not familiar, meetup.com, an online resource, basically a social network for like-minded individuals to get together, to meet up, and talk about the things that they're mutually interested in. They can be things associated with work, we're all realtors, we're all small business owners, or dental hygienists, or areas of interest, we're bikers, we're hikers, we're mobile app developers, whatever it may be. So use that resource and meet up and offer to come in and talk about the thing that you're interested in. Another good suggestion that I hear quite a bit is use your community. So things like libraries, schools, reach out to your chamber of commerce, look for area conventions and conferences and volunteer to speak at those opportunities. This isn't about making money all the time. This is about testing your presentation. This is about building your confidence. One example of this is one of the uh, Toastmasters at the Woodridge Club that I'm in actually heard that the annual Mensa conference, you know, the Society for Exceptionally Gifted High IQ People, and I know what you're thinking, but no, I'm not a member <laughs> yet. <laughs> he actually heard that the convention was coming to North Chicago, and so he reached out and volunteered to talk about something he was very comfortable with and you wouldn't think Mensa would be interested in at all. Auto repair. And they actually accepted it. He did it last year. It went so well, they invited him back this year and in fact added a presentation on brake repair. 
And so that was a great sort of oh, out-of-the-box way of saying, and he gets the experience, he builds his resume, and builds that confidence of knowing that he can talk to all sorts of different types of audiences. So uh, it was really think about ways that you can kind of think out of the box, if you will. And then an opportunity for all of us, squarely in the box, we should, any presenter really should be taking advantage of this, was one of the largest online resources that every single one of us can be taking advantage of. You know what it is. You've seen it. You've watched videos there. YouTube, of course. YouTube is a great place for you to share your expertise, your perspective, and it doesn't matter. Why would it matter if you get five views, 50 views, 5,000 or 5 million views, as long as you're getting the experience and the confidence of, of presenting? And people will always say, well, I don't have a good camera, I don't have good lighting, the, my microphone sucks. But I bet each and every one of you have watched a video that the camera wasn't so great, or the lighting wasn't good, their faces all in shadow or something like that. You could barely hear them, had to turn the sound all the way up. If you don't expect perfection of them, why would you expect perfection of yourself? If you were interested, I bet you watched those videos because the speaker was compelling, they were talking about something you wanted to know more about, People won't be judging you, certainly not in your first 50 videos or whatever, they won't be judging you based on the quality of your microphone. They'll be listening to the topic that you have to share about. Make sure that you take advantage of that as an idea. And then one last suggestion, all this is tip number one. Boy, we have a lot to go through. So one last suggestion as well is if you're somewhat comfortable with a topic, to a key way of getting more confident is to really study more about that topic. The more you know about something, the more comfortable you're going to feel, the more confident you're going to be. So study the topic itself. And a good example of that, my wife at work, she's she does not look forward to presenting. She's, she gets anxious, she gets nervous when she has to present. But at work they rolled out a new software program. And it was squarely in her department, she was leading it, she knew that she was going to have to lead many meetings on it. In fact, actually present it to the leadership team, maybe even train the leadership team. And what, so what did she do? She learned everything there was to know about that software program. And she's not a techie person by any stretch of the imagination. She learned everything she could about it, upside, down, inside, out, left to right, if software even has a left to right. She learned it, and it helped her feel more confident so that when she went into those meetings, went into those presentations, she had that confidence of knowing that she could answer the questions that came up. There were very few things about that situation that she felt unprepared for, and that really helped boost her confidence. So learn everything you can learn about the subject you're going to present on. All of that, tip number one, they're packed full of goodness. <laughs> tip number two, you can't always present on only things that you're comfortable with. But in every presentation, look for an opportunity to use the things you're comfortable with as examples or stories inside whatever presentation you're doing. So leverage your expertise in whatever presentation you're giving. An example of this would be, say you're a nurse, and you have to give presentations on new patient procedures. You have to train 30 or 40 other nurses, some of them senior to you, so very experienced. There's going to be managers there. There's going to be hospital administrators. And so that may be a nerve-wracking or somewhat anxious situation for you. Your passion is NASCAR. You loved going to races as a kid. You look forward to races every weekend with your spouse and your kids. So that's what you love to do. 
there may be an opportunity for you to select a theme for your presentation for these new patient procedures on racing to better care or working together to achieve high quality or something to that effect. Don't turn the entire presentation into a presentation about auto racing, but find two or three examples to leverage what you love in your presentation. So a specific example, maybe when we nurses are on the patient floor, we need to act like a NASCAR pit crew. And every one of us has a job, has a, a, our expertise that we need to bring together in a well-coordinated team. If one of us falters, then the patient uh, or the driver it suffers, and so they may not get as good a care as we would like to give. So we need to make sure that if we see one team member struggling a little bit, that we quickly move over to help that team member so that we can give the level of care that we want. Or also look for examples or stories of good experiences in your job that you can share. So maybe a nurse did something with a particular patient that the patient was so surprised about. Only you know those stories. So find opportunities to share those. If you can't do everything with a particular passion, you know your job. You've had experiences in your job of what coworkers have done, what your customers have said, and things like that. So look for opportunities to weave in examples that you're familiar with. All of that, tip number two. And then tip number three, whether we like it or not, we all have families. <laughs> Use stories from your family. Find succinct ways. Again, we don't want to turn the presentation into 45 minutes of bragging about little Veronica and how she started walking when she was only six months old and now has gone on to achieve all A's and she was valedictorian and she's better than all the other Veronicas <laughs> in the whole wide world. We don't want to turn the presentation into that. But maybe there's examples of where Veronica ran into a challenge in school and on her own she reached out to a teacher and asked to come in early. And, and so you learned the importance of always asking for being willing to ask for help or, or seek mentorship or something like that. Look for ways in which you could take a few examples from your life, from your family's life, and utilize them in your presentation. And just like your hobbies, your passions, nobody knows those better than you. And because of that, you'll look forward to those moments in your presentation. It actually will give you just a bit more connection. Another big benefit of that, of course, is we know as presenters the importance of storytelling. People learn in stories. And so if I'm able to tell a quick little story or something like that, again, that's on point, my audience is going to get to know me better, is going to feel more connected to me, as well as they'll learn the point that I'm trying to make more because they'll have, they'll associate the story. Oh yeah, that's right, he, she had a daughter that did this or that. I need to remember to do that in, in my presentation or in my life, something to that effect. The audience learns that way. Uh, so that is tip number three. I'm gonna pause, uh, we're two thirds of the way through and I just wanna make sure that we're on track. Have you found some things that you think you'll be able to utilize that would help you feel more confident? Hopefully, a couple head shakes. Yes, good, okay. <laughs> Anybody completely disappointed so far? <laughs> so, I mean, we good. can't put all those family stories in every speech. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Andrew's just packed full of just all about your family. Okay. So I wanted to stop and ask questions, make sure that we were on track. And actually, that's a beautiful segue to tip number four, which is ask questions. Make sure you're sprinkling in 
questions all throughout the presentation, especially the longer the presentation, the more you can find opportunities to stop. Just like I did a second ago, stop in and check in with the audience. It, 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 uh, helping you uh, know that you're on track, that the audience is getting valuable information, again, helps you, okay, okay, all right, so we're, we're, we're safe. And also, the importance of getting people interacting with you. It, it helps break up the presentation a little bit, it again helps them uh, connect to you. And so whether you're asking them to raise their hand or do what Barbara did yesterday and shout out some things, whichever you're most comfortable with, you'll see that I'm uh, actually a hand raiser, <laughs> trying to get folks to raise their hand, whatever works well for you. Such things as how many of you have dot, 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 or how many of you would like to dot, dot, dot. Another good one is, can someone give me an example of, come on, say it with me. Dot, 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 dot. dot. Thank you, Joanna, I appreciate that. So that one, especially asking for examples of this, encourages the people to, number one, stop, think, get reconnected with you, and then also to share and the audience starts to learn from each other. It's not just my perspective now, it's other people. And I thought Barbara did a great job of that throughout her two keynotes, is she asked for examples of great customer service or bad customer service. So it wasn't just her examples, it was other people's examples as well. So ask, try to encourage people to talk, if it makes sense in your presentation. And it gives you a bit of a break too, if somebody, whether you're just grabbing a glass of water, or whether two people start kind of sharing just a little bit, it takes a little pressure off of you, again, it gives you a chance to breathe. Yes? I have a question about Please. asking questions during uh, your presentation, right. because sometimes I am concerned that you're going to get that audience member or two or three or four is going to tell their whole life story, especially when I'm giving information in my yeah. session. And and I don't want to be rude and have to cut them off, but I have to be rude and cut them off because it's my presentation and other people are in the room. So how, you know, how do you manage that and like how many questions do you f fit in in each 10 minute module or something? Like what's the... I'm not sure, it's a great question, I appreciate that. I, I'm not sure that there is a magic formula. I, I know that you, um, without question, the more you ask questions, the more likely you are to get, you're just increasing the, uh, the percentages of somebody will start to kind of go off or won't be relevant. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with if somebody if you can tell pretty quickly that this question is is kind of starting to go off in a different direction or I don't think there's anything wrong with a, like wow that question is really it seems like a great one and it's something that I want to spend time unpacking how about if we just hold that for now and you come up to me afterwards after the presentation or okay. something like that like don't be afraid to kind of step in or, or something like that or once, if it's, you do need to try to keep control of the room. So if it's, you notice a couple times with Barbara, she was losing it just a little bit, and it, it, it so you just kind of, you need to practice that a little bit okay. and, and see what works in any particular situation. So just try it out and see and then facilitate as necessary. That's right. Don't ever be afraid to say, well that's a that's a great question. Or some people will ask a question even when you weren't you weren't asking for questions or something like that. And if you don't have time in that moment, then say, that's a great question. Why don't you hold on to that for and I'll make sure that I have plenty of time for questions after the presentation or something. Okay, and just one more follow-up to that is, is what I've also done is I've asked a question during a presentation and I've said just just think in your mind, answer it to yourself. Yeah. Because it gets the audience engaged, but then I, I don't get off track, especially at the beginning. Yeah. I, that's a, a great way to handle it as well. Again, you want them to make sure that they're 
they're paying attention, they're listening, they're but if you're not in a position at that particular time to really deal with questions, right. then that's a great yeah. way of handling it. Okay. Okay. So think about those questions because I'm going to have time at the end of the presentation to answer yeah. them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so ask questions, get people uh, interacting. And in fact, if you do uh, anything over a video conference, a lot of software nowadays lets people do polling. So that is a great way. Of course, you can't see people uh, raising their hand. And sometimes with video conferencing, you don't, you do ask for questions, but you, you have to be a bit more strategic. You don't necessarily want people interrupting you because you can't see somebody raising their hand. And so using a poll uh, every now and then, or you kind of making sure that you pause every 10 or 15 minutes or something and say, okay, I just want to stop and see if there are any questions or anything that, again, get them coming back to you. That's a great tip. And then the fifth and final tip that I'm going to share today is in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. So what in helping you prepare for a presentation do you think it's all about? What do we all should we do? Preparing. Practice, right? Practice, practice, practice. The more comfortable you are with just like the subject matter itself, but the more comfortable you are with that presentation, the more confidence you're going to feel giving that presentation. Some suggestions on ways to practice is we all have something in nearly every room in our house that we can utilize to help us practice. What do you think that would be? Mirror. mirror. Right? Yeah. So stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself more than you usually do. <laughs> and uh, as important as it is for you to be telling yourself how beautiful you are, you're actually going to spend time telling yourself uh, uh, the presentation. You're going to focus this time on the presentation. Joy, did you and your question? audience can be your cat or dog. That's Man. right. That's right. Pull in the pets. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, use the mirror. Get used to looking that person in the eye. Get used to being looked at in the eye by the audience. If you're using slides, Bring over your laptop and set it on the vanity, or if you're in the hallway, pull up a chair and bring your laptop with you. Make sure that you are practicing the timing of those, those slides and key points you're going to share. Make sure that you know what's coming in the slides as well, so, so you're not surprised each and every time there's a new slide that appears <laughs> beside you. And just as a side note, when you're doing presentations, the fewer the words, the fewer words on those slides, the better, because you want people paying attention to you and not reading the words on the slide. So those should not be in 84-inch speaker notes over there. They should be a few succinct things to just help reinforce what you're saying. So get used to what those slides are saying and what your key points are going to be so practice in the mirror of doing that. Another great tool I mentioned a bit in tip number one is video. We all have a phone. We love chasing around our dog and cat, taking pictures of them. So use that video to record yourself. Again, just set it on the vanity, set it on, on the chair in the hallway. And it truly does not matter what the lighting is or what the sound is as long as you can hear. And go through your presentation, treat it as the real thing. Treat it as yourself, that you are talking to the audience. This is the real deal. And equally important of going through the presentation is watch the video back. Don't just say, nailed it, and leave the video uh, on, the, uh, on the phone. Because I promise you that if you watch it back, you'll go, really? I do that? <laughs> or something to that effect. And I'm not saying, don't be critical of yourself, but just see what your eyes are doing, where they're looking. See what your hands are doing. Are you flailing around unexpectedly? 
I didn't see what your movement is. Are you shifting back and forth? Those those types of things. Watch the video back. And then the last one, pull in family members. Dogs, cats, they count as well. But, but grab your spouse. That's why you got married in the first place, right? So they'd have to watch you give presentations when, <laughs> when they don't want to. So grab your spouse, your children, your parents, your grandparents, cousins, neighbors next door, whatever it may be, and have them watch the presentation and give you positive feedback, constructive criticism. You want to hear the things that you did well and a few key points that you might want to think about for next time. If there's something that you're working on, again, if your hand gestures or something like that, tell them in advance and say, keep an eye on what my hands are doing, or make sure that I'm looking around at the audience, the audience, things like that. So have them look for the key things that you're trying to work on. Now, those are the five key points. I'll review them in just a second, and in fact, uh, on your way out the door, we're going to hand out a little sheet that actually has them on there as well. To make this uh, real for you one more time, a, a hypothetical example. Let's say that you are you got asked to be a presenter at a large gathering of like-minded individuals. Completely hypothetical. Let's say this gathering is the fall conference of <laughs> Toastmasters District 30, just hypothetical. And you're going to give a presentation. You want to feel really confident in giving that presentation. So you, number one, you pick the topic. You control the topic. You choose something that you feel comfortable with, you have experience with. And then tip number two, as you go through or uh, as you're going through it, you weave in examples from your life, like you talked about with your wife, who was nervous until she really learned the program she was talking about. You talk about what other Toastmasters, how they volunteered to speak in Mensa conference, or things like that. You talk about, you know, your hobbies, adult coloring books, things like that. You weave in examples from your life. You ask questions, to number four, is you ask questions all throughout the presentation, make sure that people are engaged. And then last but not least, you spend plenty of time practicing uh, in order to prepare for that presentation. And I promise you that if you do that, every single audience member is going to take their evaluation and they're going to say, awesome, super terrific, Mark was or hypothetical presenter, whatever their name was, was absolutely awesome. So uh, it, make sure that you use these tips. It will help you be more confident. Let's review real quick. Tip number one is talk about things that you love. Talk about, or tip number two is no matter what the presentation is on, see tip number one. <laughs> talk about things that you love. <laughs> inside the presentation. Number three, give examples, relevant, on-point examples from your life or from your kids, family, whatever it is. Number four, ask questions. And number five, practice, practice, practice. Save you some writing, just say practice. And those are the five uh, tips that I wanted to share with you. We all get nervous. You can't stop it. I get nervous. I've given a lot of presentations. I still get nervous. You will get nervous. But use your strengths, your expertise, your experiences. Apply them to your presentation. I promise you, it will help you feel more confident. You'll have a good time. Your audience will have a great time because you're a more confident presenter. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Please do fill out a um, yeah, we would love the evaluation as well. Thank you so much, sir.